Hi everyone. So I know there's been a lack of content for me in the past few months and that's because of the writer and actor strike. There hasn't been that many projects coming out lately which don't get me wrong is totally fine hollywood pay your workers a living wage challenge but because of this lack of content i've actually been re-watching a lot of old movies that i used to love and still love of course but they were just movies that i watched throughout my teen years that i really really resonated with i would actually re-watch them for years and years and years because they were just so comforting to me but now that i'm a little older re-watching them felt so weird but still very, very comforting, but in a different way. Like, I don't resonate with these characters as much as I used to, which I think shows growth on my part, which is good because my birthday's on December 11th and I'm no longer gonna be a teenager, thank God. So since my teen years are ending, I wanted to share some of my favorite projects that helped me through my teen years for any teen out there who's struggling because being a teenager in today's age is really really hard by the way you don't have to be a teenager to watch them they're just good projects that have like teenagers as its protagonist and talks about like teen subjects but you don't have to be a teenager to enjoy them but before i start i'm gonna plug my vlog channel real quick <laughs> If you want to get to know me and see what I'm up to, I'll link it down below. Disclaimer as usual, these are just my opinions. Feel free to comment yours, just remember to be respectful. Also comment your favorite scene stuff down below because I'm definitely missing a lot on this list and I'll probably make a part two. Okay, let's begin. Mean Girls can you believe that this movie came out almost 20 years ago and it's only grown in popularity? Mean Girl stars Lindsay Lohan as Katie Heron. She was raised in Africa by her scientist parents. When she moves to Illinois, she experiences public school for the first time. She also experiences boys, drama, and take a wild guess, Mean Girls. Dubbed The Plastics, Katie joins the popular girl group and learns about how girl world works. So like I said, this movie came out almost 20 years ago and it's grown exponentially in popularity. This movie is iconic, okay? The jokes, the fashion, Regina George. If you haven't seen this movie, you've definitely heard a few of its jokes, like that's so fetch. He asked me what day it was. On Wednesdays, we were pink. I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. Since its release in 2004, I've seen a lot of movies try to replicate it. They'll have a trio of pretty girls and try to start new slang, and um, they failed. I think what makes the characters of Mean Girls so special and unique and iconic is that one, they're more than just the stereotypes. Beneath all the pink and glamour were actual fleshed out characters with motives and personality. This entire film for me is just one big social commentary on how girl world works. The tactics they'll use to destroy your life without even batting an eye. And it was brilliantly portrayed with the writing. Thank you, Tina Fey. <laughs> Performances are also incredible, especially from Rachel McDonald. Adams. Like, I hate to constantly use the word iconic, but she did give an iconic performance as Regina George while also giving another iconic performance in The Notebook. Like, she literally wore a wig throughout the filming process because she was filming both movies at the same time. Even though I love this movie, it's definitely not perfect. For one, almost everyone in the cast is white, but considering it came out in 2004, I can unfortunately understand why. It does have some very 2000s language and jokes. Some would definitely not fly by today, but just keep in mind that this film was made a while ago. I'm also very curious to what the new Mean Girls is gonna look like, cause the trailer looks very interesting. A part of me is scared that it's just gonna be an abomination like Mean Girls 2, but Tina Fey wrote the screenplay, so I have a little bit of hope. So yeah, in conclusion, go watch Mean Girls if you haven't already, you're missing out. <laughs> Bo Burnham Inside you might be thinking, why the heck did Hope put this movie on the list? Well, shut up, let me explain. Bo Burnham starred, directed, wrote, filmed, and edited this movie over the course of the pandemic in our awful year of isolation. Inside is the story of a comedian trying to make a show while literally being limited to a single room. While the outside world is in flames, he sings silly satirical songs about it to distract himself. As he quite literally puts it in the beginning, he's making this film to distract him from unaliving himself. But as the film progresses, you can see him start to lose his mind. And I think there should be a mandatory viewing of this movie to every teenager today. Bo's straight up honesty about our world leaves you questioning. His transparency about white privilege, unaliving himself, and society's morals is something we all need to hear. 
It's a pretty dark film, but we live in a pretty dark world, and it's important to be aware of it. I can't say too much about this film without spoiling it, but just go watch it. Also, I first saw this film over two years ago, and to this day, I find it extremely comforting. Not just because Bo and I view the world pretty similarly, but seeing his struggles with mental health meant a lot to me. It takes a lot of courage to open up, and Bo is literally showing us footage of his mental state. I really appreciated this film, and I still go back to rewatch it when I'm back inside again. And I just think that the metaphor of the entire film is my favorite part. The Edge of Seventeen have you ever felt like everything in your life is going downhill? Like nothing has been right for a long time and the entire world is against you? But it's not only until you take a step back and realize that no, it's just you. Your actions are hurting the people around you, and if you want your life to change, then you have to change. If you ever felt this way about yourself or your life, I think this film is perfect for you. This film is the feature debut from writer and director Kelly Furman Craig, and what a frigging debut. It's a coming of age story about high school junior Nadine, played by Haley Steinfeld. She feels like her life is a mess and the world is actively working against her, but when her older brother starts dating her best friend, she feels even more alone than ever. Left to fend for herself, she struggles with awkwardness, family, and her identity. She meets another teenager and, to quote the synopsis, gives her a glimmer of hope that things just might not be so terrible after all. I think what makes this film so special is that it's just real. Like, the social awkwardness struggles, self-discovery, and peer pressure, it's all so real and relatable. Not only is it real, but it's funny. There are some serious themes in this movie, but it's balanced out by the humor line is I have nothing in common with the people out there and they have nothing in common with me. Maybe nobody likes you. Everyone in this cast has great comedic timing, especially Haley Steinfeld. And I also have the same birthday as her, so I love her extra hard. The character development is also well written, especially for Nadine, because the protagonist is the problem. I'm not saying this to be mean, by the way, that's just the truth. No, it's not 100% her fault, but her lashes of anger make the situation worse. I remember watching this movie a few years ago and being heavily inspired by it. I think I was like 16 or 17, and this movie made me take a step back and reflect on my own life? How have I hurt people before without even knowing it? Am I the problem? And what steps do I take to fix me? I just think this film is so heartfelt. Like, the portrayal of adolescence is just so real. And again, I don't think you need to be a teenager to enjoy this film because anyone at any age can reflect back on their own past experiences. This movie just gets you thinking and has so many meaningful themes to offer. Lady Bird. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, Lady Bird. Like, what a freaking movie. Directed and written by Mother Greta Gerwig, Lady Bird is the story of a girl and her mother. Christine, aka Lady Bird, is a California high school student who goes to a Catholic school. She has a difficult relationship with her mother, who is just like her, wildly loving, strong-willed, and deeply opinionated. That summary may seem short and brief, I mean, it was only like two sentences, but please don't let that stray you away. I walked into this film not expecting much, and I left crying. <laughs> I know I said this with the last movie, but it just offers such a real and authentic portrayal of adolescence. I love character-driven films more than plot-driven ones. I love exploring different people and their relationships, and Lady Bird has one of the best portrayals of a mother-daughter relationship that I've ever seen on screen. Like, all their fights, their moments of tension, their frequent misunderstandings, but always having that sense of love and connection. Oh my god, oh my god, it's just so real. These two are similar in more ways than they even know, and you just get the sense that maybe the reason they don't get along is because they see too much of each other in themselves. Maybe they don't even like themselves. And as someone who also has mommy issues, this portrayal is just so honest and real. Lady Bird is also a great protagonist. She's very flawed in her own way, but her ambition and boldness to be great is very relatable to every teenager. It can get the best of her sometimes, but 
that her character development was pretty inspiring. This film has such a strong sense of writing and direction. The narrative is so well crafted and sincere that it just feels timeless. The film only came out a few years ago, but the story is actually set in 2002, and it still feels so relatable and easy to resonate with. Please, 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 please go watch this beautiful story and great performances. It deserved at least one Oscar, in my opinion. This film was robbed. And finally, the perks of being a wallflower. Forget being a teenager, I think everyone should watch this movie. This film was adapted from the 1999 novel. I was forced to read this book in high school and I completely fell in love with it. And as an avid fan of the novel, I personally think that the film adaptation is great. The film's narrative is centered on Charlie. We watch the story unfold through his eyes. We also hear his thoughts and learn about his personal struggles. He's, guess what, a wallflower and spends his life watching people from the sidelines. One day two very charismatic and energetic students take him under his wing. In doing so, Charlie experiences the joys of love, friendship, music, and so much more. His teacher also encourages Charlie's dream of becoming a writer. For probably the first time in his life, he has a newfound confidence in himself. But when his friends prepare to leave for college, his inner sadness and trauma grows and threatens to ruin all the progress he's made. This film is deep. <laughs> The film tackles so many themes like mental health, identity, abandonment, love, trauma, abuse, but in my opinion, it never feels overstuffed. Like I said before, I love character-driven stories, and each character in this movie comes with their own themes. I can't say too much about it without spoiling, obviously, but I think the most powerful themes were with Charlie and his mental health. As a wallflower myself, I resonated so much with Charlie and his struggles. I saw myself in him in so many ways and just watching his story unfold was very comforting and therapeutic to me. There's also a really great message in this film. I wouldn't consider it a spoiler because it's literally spelled out for you in the synopsis, but its message of inclusivity is really beautiful. If you accept people for who they really are, they can blossom under your love. Being patient and tolerable with different kinds of people can help them a lot more than you think, especially those who feel mistreated, unappreciated, or ignored completely. The movie also looks fantastic. I'm a sucker for film, okay? I just think film makes everything look way better, and it was a great choice for this movie. Not just because the film takes place in the 90s, but using film just also gives it that timeless feel. And over 10 years after this movie's release, it's still resonating with so many people. I hate to keep this brief. Yes, believe it or not, this is brief. But please go watch this movie. It was so, so, so special to me throughout my teen years. And as my adolescent years come to an end, it continues to be a film that I constantly go back to. In conclusion, I know teen movies have a bad rep, but there are some great ones out there. You just gotta look extra hard, because for every perks of being a wallflower, you got three kissing booths. I want to make a part two, and maybe even part three of this, because there are some more incredible coming-of-age stories out there. Please, please, please comment below your opinions on these movies, and your favorite teen movies below. Thank you so much for watching. Again, these are just my opinions. Please comment yours on these movies or your favorite teen movies. Just remember to be respectful. Follow me on Instagram if you want. Subscribe if you want. Have a great day. Bye!